Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the topic distillation. We are also going to discuss the various equipment used in the process of distillation. Okay, so what is this distillation? So definition of distillation is distillation is the process of converting liquid into its vapor by heating and reconverting it again into liquid by condensing the vapor so first we are going to take a liquid which we are going to heat it because of the heating that liquid is going to convert into vapor so that vapor again we are reconverting into liquid okay by the process of condensation which is called as or did that entire process is called as distillation so it is a method of separating substance which differ in their vapor pressure so if two liquids are mixed together and their vapor pressure will be always uh, will have always different and that liquid can be separated by means of distillation by doing the distillation process the distillation process is carried out in a specific apparatus and this apparatus uh, it contain various parts okay so firstly it contain a still in which the volatile material can be boiled so you can see here this is the still where we are going to take the sample and where the liquid is going to convert into vapor okay this is one part another part it is called as the condenser so this is the condenser which is going to convert the vapor into liquid okay so first here in the still the liquid is going to boil and this is going to convert into vapor and this this vapor is going or it is going to pass through this condenser and in this condenser the liquid is going to condense the vapor is going to condense into liquid and lastly the receiver where we are going to collect the liquid again so here the liquid get converted into vapor here vapor convert into liquid and here we are going to collect the liquid again in the receiver so next is what are the various type of distillation process are there so there are different type of distillation process are there first the simple distillation second is the distillation under reduced pressure next is fractional distillation next is steam distillation and lastly the destructive distillation so as per the syllabus we are going to discuss in details about these four different type of distillation that is simple distillation distillation under reduced pressure fractional distillation and the steam distillation in details coming to the first one that is the simple distillation so it is a process of converting a liquid into its vapor in a distillation still then transferring the vapor to another place and condensing it again into liquid so this is the definition of simple distillation so where we are going to take a liquid that we are going to heat it we are going to convert this liquid into vapor that vapor we are going to transfer to a different place which is called as condenser and in the condenser the vapor is going to convert into liquid and that liquid is collected again so basically the simple distillation is nothing but it is this is the entire flow chart where first we are going to take the liquid we are going to apply heat because of this heating <coughs> sorry the vapor it will form vapor and this vapor we are going to cool it or we are going to condense it because of the condensation it is going to convert into liquid again and that liquid is collected coming to next is the apparatus used for laboratory scale distillation so it consists of a distillation flask with a side arm sloping downwards which is connected to a condenser so here you can see uh, this entire part is called as 
the distillation flux which is having this side arm which is you can see here clearly which is having a slope and the, and the condenser is connected to connected to this side arm next the condenser condensed paper are collected in a flux called as receiver okay so this is the uh, receiver and the paper which is going to pass through the condenser is going to convert into liquid and it is going to collect in the receiver the whole apparatus is made up of glass only so the entire uh, simple distillation unit will be made up of glass only the distillation flux should contain half to two third of the liquid to be distilled so here in this distillation flux we are going to fill the distillation flux almost half or two third of the quantity it contains it may allow that much sample we are going to take the thermometer is fitted to distillation flux to note down the temperature at which the paper are distilled so here we are going to connect a thermometer uh, to the distillation flux where we are going to measure the temperature when the paper start coming from the still and it is going to pass to the condenser so the temperature we are going to note it down bumping is avoided by adding small piece of porcelain before distillation so in this distillation flux or in the still when heat is applied there will be a formation of bubbles which is called as bumping so that bumping can be uh, minimized by adding some uh, small pieces of porcelain in the uh, liquid that we are going to heat it because of that porcelain the bumping will be stopped coming to next is the application of simple distillation so it is used for the preparation of distilled water and water for injection so many volatile oil and aromatic water are prepared by simple distillation organic solvent are also purified by simple distillation many official compound are prepared by distillation for example spirit okay let's see a video which will describe all the details about the instrument topic for today is simple distillation I need to remove this nail polish. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Nail polish can be removed by acetone. Acetone can be obtained by simple distillation. The process of heating a liquid mixture to form vapor and then cooling that vapor to get a liquid is called simple distillation. Distillation is used to purify a liquid by separating the components of a liquid mixture. Ah! <laughs> Let us perform an activity to understand simple distillation. 
Take a mixture of acetone and water in a distillation flask. Put a thermometer in it. <laughs> Connect the flask to a water condenser. The condenser has cold water running through its jacket to keep the temperature cool. Keep a beaker at the outlet of the condenser. Ah. Heat the mixture keeping an eye on the thermometer. When the temperature hits 56 degrees Celsius, acetone starts to vaporize. These vapors condense in the water condenser. The condensed acetone gets collected in the beaker. When all the acetone vaporizes, water is left in the flask. Acetone is collected in the beaker. In this way, acetone and water get separated by simple distillation. Ah. Oh. <laughs> huh? Boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Boiling point of acetone is 56 degrees Celsius. As there is sufficient difference between their boiling points, these components can be separated by simple distillation. Simple distillation does not work properly when difference between two boiling points is less than 25 degrees Celsius. This is because the components do not get separated and purified completely. If we repeat this process multiple times, we will be able to separate these two components. However, as this is very time consuming, a special type of distillation called fractional distillation is used. Mm. Ah. <laughs> The next type of distillation is the fractional distillation, which is also called as distillation of miscible liquid. So, when a substance is dissolved in a liquid, the vapor pressure of the liquid is lowered. So, means when something is dissolved in a liquid, that in that mixer, in that mixer where a solid is or a substance is dissolved in the liquid in that mixer what will happen the vapor pressure of that particular liquid will be lower than the actual vapor pressure of the liquid when two miscible liquids are mixed together each will act as a solute or solvent for each other when we are going to mix two miscible liquids for example alcohol and water so in that case both each liquid will will act as a solute and solvent for each other 
so for water and alcohol both will act as a solute and solvent for each other so when a mixture of such liquid is heated which are miscible to each other the vapor pressure of each will be lowered so when two miscible liquids are um, mixed together and that mixer is heated that time what will happen the vapor pressure of the total mixer will be lower than the individual vapor pressure of that particular mixer so when two miscible liquids are mixed together the pressure exerted by each liquid in the mixer is known as partial pressure the liquid boils when the sum of the partial pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure so we know uh, that when the atmospheric pressure is equal to the vapor pressure so that time the liquid start boiling so when two liquids are mixed when two miscible liquids are mixed together so that mixer will have a lower vapor pressure which is called as partial pressure and that partial pressure when it is equal to the atmospheric pressure that time the liquid start boiling so the vapor pressure or the vapor arises from two miscible liquid at boiling point are richer in the component exerting the greater partial pressure so when a liquid is uh, liquid is uh, when two liquid are mixed together their partial pressure when it is e equal to the atmospheric pressure that time it start boiling so that particular system the vapor pressure when it rises of the two mixer at the boiling point that means at atmospheric pressure the uh, the liquid which is having more vapor pressure will have more component at that particular point when this liquid start boiling coming to next is the apparatus used for laboratory scale so this is little bit different from the simple distillation as you can see in this diagram so it contain a fractionating column uh, which is fitted between the distillation flux and the condenser so in case of the simple distillation the distillation flux was directly fitted with the uh, condenser but here we are going to have a separate uh, separate fittings which is called as the fractionating column which is fitted between this distillation flux and the condenser so the fractionating column is used for continuous separation of two miscible liquid so in case of uh, simple distillation we were uh, distillating uh, liquid which is having uh, the volatile uh, the vapor pressure which is fast different but here we are going to uh, separate the liquid which is having near vapor pressure so here we need a continuous process where the liquid gets separated so there are two types of fractionating columns are there long fractionating column is used in the mixer where the boiling point is quite close to each other and short fractionating column is used in those cases where there is a considerable difference in the boiling point of the mixer of a miscible liquid coming to next is the method so here in this method the mixer of miscible liquid is heated in the still then the vapor formed are allowed to pass through the fractionating column where a part of the vapor is condensed and while returning to the still it come in contact with uh, intimate contact with the rising vapor resulting in further fraction of the liquid being distilled as you can see here in this uh, diagram where uh, the liquid will be boiled here two immiscible two miscible liquids are boiled here which is having very near boiling point so when we boil this liquid 
both the liquid which is having very near boiling point will start evaporating and it will go to this condenser and it because of the nature of this fractionating column what will happen they say example a and b we are separating so a and b together it will go here but because of the small uh, small difference in the boiling point a will first go and that will condense here itself and they, it will come back okay so because of this thing what will happen b will get condensed and it will fall here and a will get evaporated and it will go to the condenser again and this process will keep continuing the liquid with higher boiling point is condensed first and vapor become richer in the liquid having the lower boiling point which get condensed in the condenser so come to the application in pharmacy of this distillation that is the fractional distillation firstly alcohol is purified from mixture of alcohol and water obtained from fermentation tank next it is used for separation of miscible liquid when uh, the uh, there is a mixture of alcohol and water or acetone or water or chloroform and benzene are mixed that can be separated by this fractional distillation okay let's see a video which will describe all the details about the instrument let's take an example separation of acetone and benzene by fractional distillation as the difference in boiling points of acetone whose boiling point is 329 Kelvin and benzene whose boiling point is 353 Kelvin is only 24 Kelvin their mixture can be separated by the process of fractional distillation using fractionating column let's see how this can be done the mixture is taken in the distillation flask Fractionating column is inserted between distillation flask and Liebig water condenser. The flask is heated on water bath at a steady temperature of 329 Kelvin. Acetone distills out and is collected as first fraction in the receiver. The vapors of benzene are cooled in the column, and liquid benzene trickles down back into the flask. When acetone is distilled out completely, the temperature starts rising, and the receiver is changed. When the temperature becomes steady at 353 Kelvin, benzene distills out, and is collected as second fraction, in the receiver. Acetone and benzene can be further purified by redistillation using simple distillation apparatus. Coming to next is the steam distillation. It is also called as distillation of two immiscible liquid. In case of um, fractional distillation, we have discussed the distillation of miscible liquid, but when both the liquids are immiscible that time we can use this process which is called as steam distillation to separate that kind of liquid so when two immiscible liquids are heated together then the mixer boil when the sum of the vapor pressure equal to the atmospheric pressure so this is the basic theory where when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure that time as liquid start boiling in case of this um, immiscible liquid when the sum of the vapor pressure of the two immiscible liquid will be equal to the atmospheric pressure that time it will start boiling the temperature at which the mixer boil is lower than that of the each of the liquid that is the boiling point of the mixer is lower than that of the liquid with the lower boiling point so it, this is a concept which uh, always will be there in a mixer of liquid when two liquid are mixed together 
then the boiling point of that particular mixer of the liquid will be low even in even uh, compared to the lower boiling point liquid also the temperature at which the liquid boils remains stationary until one of the liquid has completely removed from the still so this is the apparatus which we are going to use in the laboratory scale okay so it consists of a steam can fitted with a cork having two hole so this is the steam can which is having or which is fitted with a cork and that cork is having two hole through one of the hole band tube connected till the bottom of the flux leading the steam to the flux containing the sample so here you can see this is the band tube and this band tube is connected or is fitted till to till the bottom of the flux where the sample liquid is we are going to heat so there are two opening in this cork uh, in one opening we are going to connect the band tube another long tube which passes through the other hole reaches the almost to the bottom of the steam can called as safety tube release the pressure created inside so uh, in one hole we have connected a band tube and to the other hole we are going to put a tube which is called as safety tube and this safety tube we are going to connect almost to the bottom of the steam can which is used to release the pressure which is created inside this uh, steam can during the heating during this uh, distillation process moreover when steam start coming out from the safety tube it indicate the steam can is almost empty as we are going to fit it the safety tube almost to the bottom of this steam can so when the steam will start coming out from this tube it indicates that the liquid which we have filled in this steam can is almost empty because of which the vapor will start coming out of the safety tube the delivery tube carrying the vapor from the flux to the condenser to convert vapor into liquid which get collected in the receiver so there the um, flux is connected to a delivery tube which will carry the vapor from this uh, flux to the condenser and in the condenser again this vapor will get condensed into liquid and that will be collected in the receiver the sample is placed in the flux with a small quantity of water so here we are going to take the sample with a small again we are going to add little bit of water then the steam can and the flux are heated simultaneously so that a uniform flow of steam passes through the boiling mixer so both the steam can and the flux we are going to heat simultaneously because of which what will happen there will be generation of steam here and that steam passes to the liquid sample here and same time here the, uh, the liquid also will boil and that steam also is going to uh, pass to the boiling mixer distillation is continued until all the sample has distilled over the distillation is the distillate is then collected in the receiver oil is completely separated from the water so here when the paper passes to the sample the oil will first get uh, evaporated and that will go uh, it will go to the condenser and it will be collected to the receiver leaving the water here and uh, separating the oil to the receiver coming to next is the application of this steam distillation in pharmacy firstly it is used for the preparation of volatile oil most of the volatile oil are prepared by steam distillation it is used to determine the percentage of volatile oil in the drug so in some of the drug the amount of volatile oil present is determined by this 
steam distillation process it is used for the distillation of volatile oil for its purification without any decomposition as we are going to use steam here the volatile oil is not going to decompose or we can uh, you we can use this steam distillation for thermal level substance also because we are going to use steam for the process of distillation okay let's see a video which will describe all the details about the instrument the setup used for steam distillation is also same like that of normal distillation except that a separate setup for the generation of steam and pumping of the steam into the rb flask containing impure liquid is arranged then when the steam comes in into the liquid which is impure liquid that is when the steam comes into the impure liquid and that is being heated then one of the compounds becomes volatile and comes out along with the steam and will be collected separately then we will have the two phases aqueous phase and organic phase these two phases will be separated by using a yes, sub coming to next is the vacuum steel the vacuum steel are used for distilling substance under reduced pressure on large scale a vacuum steel is generally made of stainless steel or any other metal which can withstand a high vacuum so here we are going to use uh, vacuum or reduced pressure for the distillation of a substance in the laboratory scale so because of that what happened this instrument is mainly made up of stainless steel or some other uh, met metal for example say example iron or cast iron which can or uh, which can withdraw high vacuum or high pressure this steel is connected to a condenser so this is the steel which is connected to a condenser the vacuum is created by means of a vacuum pump so inside this steel we are going to create vacuum by the use of a vacuum pump here vacuum steel is filled by attaching a pipe to a tap in the lower part of the hood and the pump is started so here we're going to connect the a pipe and uh, the pump is started to create the pressure inside this vacuum steel the other end of the pipe dip in the liquid to be distilled so that it can be drawn into the steel so one end of the pipe is connected to the uh, connected to the uh, pump and other end of the pipe is connected to the or dipped in the liquid here inside this vacuum steel so that uh, it can be drawn into the steel so here because of which what will happen there will be creation of the um, pressure inside this vacuum steel an observation window in the hood is very helpful to the operation to see the progress of the distillation and also to see the level of the content in the liquid to be distilled so here we are going to put a um, observation window through which you can see inside what is going on or how much amount of liquid is there and how the distillation process is going on and how much sample is remaining in the process of distillation two receivers are generally attached to the condenser in order to collect the distillation without stopping the distillation so generally what we are going to do we are going to um, connect two receiver because uh, if one receiver is filled then the next one will be uh, yeah, the sample will be collected in the next one because we don't want to stop the process in in between because this is a process where we are going to use the uh, vacuum so we don't want to stop the process in between so we want a continuous process because of which we are going to use two receiver coming to the application of this vacuum still in pharmacy 
so this is this distillation of substance this is used for the distillation of substance that have a high boiling point at atmospheric pressure so some some liquid will have very high boiling point so that liquid will uh, need that kind of liquid will need uh, so much of heat uh, to start the boiling so that liquid can be um, distilled at lower boiling point when we, we can reduce the pressure inside the pressure or we can create a vacuum so next one is distillation of thermal level substance that get damaged by a heat or temperature so thermal level substance are the substance which get degraded because of the high temperature so if we can uh, heat or we can distill that kind of substance at lower temperature itself uh, which get the, uh, degraded by distillation by uh, the temperature can be distilled by this vacuum distillation because we are going to or the distillation process going to start at lower temperature itself next one removal of large trace of volatile substance in some sample we can remove the uh, trace, of, trace amount of volatile substance from the sample by this vacuum distillation coming to the next topic that is the purified wat water ip so the water which is free from volatile and non-volatile impurities are called as purified water it is prepared by distillation ion exchange treatment or reverse osmosis or any other suitable process this purified water can be prepared by mainly by distillation or ion exchange or reverse osmosis which is mainly used in most of the uh, water purifier nowadays the reverse osmosis or any other suitable process by which we can remove the volatile or non-volatile impurities from the water that can be used or that can be prepared the purified water it contains no added substance and meet the requirement of chemical purity specified for it so in the purified water ip there won't be any kinds of added substance or uh, it, it requires the or it meet the requirement of chemical purity that is required for purified water as the purified water is always get contaminated by microorganism hence purified water should not be used in preparation of any kinds of parental administration or parental doses form because it can contaminate microorganism it should be stored in tightly closed container always next is water for injection ip so water which is free from volatile and non-volatile impurities microorganism and pyrogen are called as water for injection it is obtained by distillation of potable water purified water or distilled water from a natural glass or suitable metal still filled with an efficient device for preventing the water drops to go along with the water so generally this um, water for injection are prepared from the uh, distilled potable water potable water in the sense the drinkable water the purified water or from the distilled water by using glass or uh, mainly stainless steel apparatus so the first portion of the distillate is rejected with which contain volatile impurity in in process of uh, preparing the water for injection while using the glass or stainless steel or the metal metal instrument when this is prepared the first portion of the water for injection which is coming out from the instrument is thrown because sometimes it can it will contain some amount of volatile impurity in the first portion of the sample 
The remainder is collected in suitable container, previously rinsed with freshly distilled water and closed so as to avoid contamination. It contains no added substance. The water for injection must meet the purity requirement stated under the purified water. It need not be sterile but it must comply with the test for pyrogen. That means it should not contain any kinds of pyrogen, pyrogen in the, uh, this kind of water for injection or this kind of sample. Water for injection is stored in tightly closed neutral glass container. Next is the sterile water for injection. It is water for injection which is sterile and suitably packed. It contains no antimicrobial agent or other added substance. It has pH between 4.5 to 7.5. It must comply with the test for sterility. It should not comply. It should also comply with the requirement of test for carbon dioxide, chloride, sulfate, nitrates and nitrites, ammonium, calcium and heavy metals. It must also comply with the test for pyrogen. Sterile water for injection should be stored in single dose container not larger than one liter in size. So they are used in single dose that means one pack should be used one time. One, one sample or one packet is not used or reused that is why it is used in a single dose once it is used it is the remaining amount is thrown next coming to the preparation of purified water ip and water for injection ip by the distillation process so mainly for uh, purified water or water for injection the potable water is used potable water is used uh, but this potable water it, it contains sometimes it contains dissolved gas such as carbon dioxide or ammonia or also it contains dissolved salt and solids so this can be solved okay, and this can be avoided by doing uh, some process uh, there are two methods by heating the feed water which remove the dissolved gas the solubility of gas decreases as the temperature rises. So what we can do going before going to the preparation of purified water, the potable water is heated so that the dissolved gas such as the carbon dioxide or ammonia will be removed because if the temperature is increased then the solubility of gas decreases in the liquid. Another method a constant level device is attached to the boiler to avoid excess concentration of salt. So we are going to put a level device on the boiler so that the concentration of the salt will be minimized. So this is the distillation unit which is going to be used for the preparation of uh, purified water or water for injection. It contains a boiler which is made of uh, cast iron mainly so you can see here this is a um, this is the boiler okay and this is a circular okay and this is a cylindrical shape uh, you, you can see here only a cross section of the instrument uh, which is called as a boiler okay it is connected to condenser tube through uh, the baffle which are made up of stainless steel so this boiler is connected through a condenser tube and this um, uh, through a buffle okay buffles are connected here and the condenser both are buffle and the condenser are made up of stainless steel buffles are provided over the top of the condenser tube to avoid water drop getting mixed with the paper so when 
the vapors will be coming from this boiler okay when the vapor is coming from this boiler they are going to pass to the because of the condenser what happened the vapor is going to condense here and because of this because of this baffle the water drop from the condensed liquid and the vapor uh, the gas is not going to mix okay the water droplet uh, will be prevented to mix with the vapor because of this uh, baffle that means what will happen the vapor will be coming from here it will uh, hit here and it will get condensed and it will come out from here it will not going to mix with the or it is not going to be mixed with the uh, vapor and the liquid also the buffalo avoid the carryover of pyrogen and other water soluble material to the droplet because the droplet will be uh, separated here because of which what will happen the uh, pyrogen if any kinds of pyrogen are there in the uh, in the sample or in the water so that will be prevented by this baffle the cold water entered at the bottom of the condenser and is heated by condensing the vapor so here through this through this inlet the cold water is uh, allowed to pass and when it passes through this tube the water this cold water will get heated because the vapor is coming down through this tube because of which this water will get heated up and the uh, liquid which uh, which is going to be uh, transferred to the boiler the flow of the uh, flow rate is adjusted in such a way that water get heated at 90 to 95 degrees celsius before it enter to the boiler so while uh, the water is allowed to pass through this condenser because of the uh, vapor it passes it comes comes out from this boiler and condensed here the water also will get heated up here and that water will get almost heated up to 90 to 95 degree celsius we are going to we are going to fix the uh, water inlet rate in such a way that the water will get heated up and it reaches to the boiler the top of the condenser jacket is open so that gas from the water can escape to the atmosphere so here you can see the top of this uh, condenser tube is open because of which if any kinds of dissolved gas are there uh, that will escape here because this water is going to be heated from the uh, vapor which is passing through this and condensing because of this this water will be heated here and that water will uh, release the if any kinds of gas is there in the water that will release and that will go to the boiler a constant level device is fitted in such a way that only the heated water uh, water free from gas enter to the boiler so here we are going to connect a constant level um, device which is going to allow only the hot water or the heated water which will go to the boiler uh, and the uh, that hot water or the heated water will be always free from gas because if we heat the water the solubility of gas in the water will decrease and that is how we are going to collect the sample uh, that, that particular uh, water will get boiled here or will convert to vapor and that vapor will condense here and we are going to collect the pure water for injection or purified water from the uh, bottom of this container so thank you all thank you for today hope you have understood the topic of distillation